Welcome to Brampton Focus. When you look at the political terrain of Brampton, federally and provincially, it's all liberal red. So if you were to represent another party, what do you have to do to start building your team? Well, putting forth nominees, of course. My name is Michael A. Charbon. We meet the first progressive conservative nominee for Brampton South, Prabhneet Zarkaria, to represent the conservatives in the 2018 provincial election, right here, next on Brampton Focus. And welcome back to Brampton Focus. Well, when you look at the red landscape in Brampton, you kind of say, Jesus, it's a tough place to be a conservative. Do you think? Well, now, when we're in 2017, it's about time that the Conservatives are starting to get their team together. Patrick Brown assembling the people who will eventually, in 2018, run. Well, an interesting thing occurred. Uh, as of late, Brampton South uh, anointed uh, their progressive Conservative candidate. And he's here with us today. Mr. Prabhneet Sarkaria is the Brampton South Conservative candidate who will be vying in the 2018 election. Uh, welcome, Prabhneet. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for being here. Uh, you're a lawyer. Uh, you're born in Canada. I mean, you're, um, uh, you've are you lived in, in, in the Brampton region. Whatever convinced you that you would want to run in this red bastion of wonderfulness of Brampton <laughs> as a conservative? What, what brought you to the political forum? Well, for me, really, it's been about the community, uh, my involvement in the community, and really listening to the grassroots and what, what people are fed up with and what they've uh, experienced in the past uh, 15, 16 years of uh, liberal reign. Uh, just a bit of background about myself, born in Ontario, raised in uh, Canada my whole life, uh, uh, lived in Caledon for a bit, uh, grew up playing football, soccer, hockey, <laughs> rugby, I uh, went off to uh, Laurier to complete my uh, uh, BBA in finance, mm. uh, after which I went to the University of Windsor and completed my law degree, and now I uh, work with uh, Miller Thompson, one of Canada's largest law firms. Uh, so that all sounds absolutely logical. That's why I ask, why did you ever think to get involved in politics? <laughs> well, I've been involved with a lot of uh, uh, community groups. Uh, uh, you know, I, I sit on the board for uh, Hockey for Humanity. We do charity tournaments, uh, helping raise money for different charities, uh, President's Choice Children's Society, Right to Play. Uh, you know, I am involved with Carbo Grow, where we harvest uh, vegetables on donated land and then donate to um, various mm. uh, food banks, um, as well as I sit on the Brampton Property uh, Standards Tribunal as well. So I've tried to keep myself involved in the community, and, and that's where I really got this urge that, um, you know, I've been involved in the community. There's so many issues that affect us uh, locally, mm -hmm. provincially, that just haven't been uh, spoken to. Uh, there's just people uh, are just completely fed up with the system now. There's been so many years of arrogance and, and waste from uh, our, our government officials, and I felt like there's a need, there's a disconnect between uh, the residents of Brampton South and Queen's Park. Uh, and I, I felt that, uh, you know, I've, I've been involved with the community. I know what they, what they want, what they speak to. Um, and, and I just felt this, a lot of energy around Patrick Brown and the PC party. Um, and, you know, I, it aligns very well with uh, my values. And I said, you know what, when just hearing people in general speaking to me, and I just said, you know what, I want to do this for the people. Uh, I need to get uh, their voice to uh, Queen's Park. So Emery Magnet is the uh, provincial uh, representative. She's a liberal. Um, she won uh, in the last election against uh, Emerjeet Gill, and there was a formidable campaign and a name that uh, translated in the Brampton community. Uh, Emery Magnet won by 47.93%, so 47%. Unfortunately, uh, with a population of just about 136,000 in Brampton, so only 36% of your constituents turned out to vote. 36 percent. Um, that would be something that, that one would uh, be a little frightened at at the outset. But more importantly, uh, Magnet has been um, uh, represented uh, Brampton South now for over eight years. What makes you think that there has been a disconnect? Because she's been reelected. Brampton is all red uh, federally. And I mean, other than Jagmeet Singh, God bless Jagmeet Singh from the NDP. Um, but being a conservative, that's a that's a tough blue tie to wear in this town. Oh no, and, you know, and I, you know, Amrit's been there for a while, a, a very long time, and uh, she served the community. But what I heard at the doors when I was signing up memberships was, 
Uh, she's an absent member for a lot of people here. They just couldn't get a hold of her. They couldn't uh, get a chance to speak to her. Um, and and there's nothing, uh, you know, I don't want to say anything uh, wrong about our uh, candidate, uh, no. sorry, our MPP, but that's just some of the concerns I heard. Right. So I, I felt like there was a lot of energy this time around. Um, so they wanted a new voice. So why politics? You're an educated, well-spoke young man. I mean, you're involved in the community. You, you're, again, well-spoke. We had a chance to, to talk briefly before yeah. the, the interview. Yeah. Why the heck would you you want to get involved in politics for god's <laughs> sakes man i mean <laughs> with all due respect to paul Disney. you know and that's and that's where it is because i feel like there's just uh there's in my opinion there's a disconnect there's uh, do we have the right candidates to go to queen's park and speak on behalf of behalf of the community uh, do we have people willing to put in the extra hours and speak and uh, speak up and get Brampton or the Peel region the fair share of funding that it, it requires? And I just felt that our advocates uh, currently sitting in Queen's Park weren't doing the job adequately. And I've, I've heard that time in and time out. And just not our advocates, but the government in power right now, the amount of waste uh, that's going on in Queen's Park, our hydro rates, our taxes, or the infrastructure spending. Um, it's just unbelievable. And we need people that can go to Queen's Park, articulate their point, and challenge these policies. Well, when you talk about people going to Queen's Park, as you can see the map that we have up there, there are five areas. Yes, sir. You're the first of five. You're the first one of the progressive conservatives to move forward. Obviously, there's going to be other parties as well, the Green, NDP, etc. Uh, don't know if there's going to be some changes in the uh, the liberal offering. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but how does it feel to be the first one? And, and how important is it to have others to follow you that are going to help build potentially this progressive movement so that you can uh, challenge the, the current liberal government? Because because again, Brampton has been red, um, highly immigrant oriented. How, how does that favor in, in or focus, I should say, in your aim? How, how do you how do you how do you deal with that? Well, I think we need to speak to the policies that affect everyday uh, Ontarians, whether immigrants or not. Uh, hydro rates affect every single person in this uh, in this province, in this riding, in this. We'll talk area. about that in the second segment. Yeah. So uh, it's just basically connecting. Like you know, sure, it's a liberal red, but. Um, We've got, it. We've got to make those inroads, and that's one of the reasons we've been nominated so early, is to have a year and a half. We have about 16 uh, to 17 months to campaign and connect with the residents of Brampton South and all across Brampton and convince them of Patrick Brown's message. And, you know, it's, it's not a hard thing to do because the Liberal government and their arrogance and wasteful spending has just been unbelievable. And, there's a, and at the doors, there's a very large voice that, is, that wants to get rid of these um, this, these arrogant policies and mis, uh, misuse taxpayers' funds. So, um, And just to mention that Jess Jehol has also been nominated from Brampton uh, North as a candidate as well. So we've got two out of the five ridings in Brampton, um, and, and hopefully by uh, July of next year, we'll have a complete team across uh, Ontario. So, Prabhmi Sarkaria. Uh, just anointed for Brampton South as a progressive conservative candidate. When we come back in segment number two, I'm going to talk about a couple of issues that are in the forefront of the, the minds of Ontario. First of all, it's hydro. And uh, we're not in the process here of trying to beat up on Liberals, but it is, a, it is a fact that affects all Ontarians. And you're going to be faced with that. So we'll have to talk a little bit about um, a hydro and, and a little bit about some of the objectives that you want to bring to Brampton South. You're watching Brampton Focus. My name is Michael A. Charbon. We'll be back with Pramit Sarkaria the first progressive conservative who's been put forth as a nomination for the election coming in 2018. Come back, we'll talk more about this. Welcome back to Brampton Focus. Well, if you're a hockey player, the score is 58-28-21. Well, that's at the provincial parliament. 58 for the Liberals, 28 for the Conservatives, 21 for the NDP. And there's a shutout going because the Green Party has Zippo, nada. So you look at that, that's a score. Uh, what, does this going to, what is this going to look like in 2018? Well, the gentleman sitting beside me is uh, someone who's going to try and make a difference. Uh, he is Pramit Sarkaria. He has just been anointed as anointed, I should say, put forth. How would you say? Appoint, uh, a appointed. Appointed. Yeah, appointed. nominated. Nominated. That's nominated. Nominated. Thank you. I said, anointed. It sounds like you're being blessed. <laughs> he has been nominated as the progressive conservative candidate uh, for Brampton South and uh, Brampton Focus here wanted to talk to somebody who's in the grassroots. I mean, as you all know, I mean, Brampton is all red. So um, 
one of the first things that comes to mind, and I had an opportunity to talk to Andrew Horvath and as well to Patrick Brown about this, uh, and this is not a uh, cut up the liberals program, but it is something from an Ontarian who is concerned. Where do you sit about what's going on with Hydro One now? We're, we're in the ditch 30%. We got a horrible budget. Um, they're talking about selling another 30%. Where, where do you sit on that issue? Well, we're completely, uh, the party is completely against uh, selling off of Hydro One. Uh, and there's various reasons for it. But let's just talk about hydro in general. Why does Ontario have the high, highest hydro rates in all of North America? Right, and, and the effect of this is just not on the consumer or, or the individual household. Right, we have people, hundreds and thousands of people who who are in arrears on their hydro bills, mm -hmm. and the premier failed to acknowledge this until maybe this summer. You know, there's been years of um, increases in hydro rates, and there's projected uh, hydro rate increases um, for the next 20 years, according to her own studies and plans. Mm -hmm. and, and it's unbelievable that we keep wasting money uh, on these failed hydro policies that keep affecting the normal uh, Ontario Ontarians that work hard, pay their bills, uh, and get burdened by this. So it, it's an unbelievably big um, issue that I'm hearing at every single door. And it's just not for consumers, it's businesses. The amount of business we lose because it's so costly to run either a factory or even a small business or any type of business well, on Ontario. Was, it was at Brampton Focus uh, just uh -huh. several weeks ago. We were talking about that and there was uh, such a passionate story. It was, it was tugging at your heart of this business in uh, Hamilton uh, that was paying uh, like $4,000 a month to keep their business going because of their hydro. And if you don't have the hydro on, they can't have the lights, you can't operate your business. And it's put such a constraint. But if I may be so bold, I think the bigger picture, although no one wants to pay more for hydro, Hydro. Um, if you look at Manitoba and Quebec, um, they are uh, governmentally held or, or, or public, publicly held. They have the cheapest hydro. We have the most expensive. But, but I still believe that the, the, the topic here is about selling it off that we will never own it again. Exactly. And, and that's one of our biggest assets and resources. And now what we've done is we've sold it. And, and many uh, economists or analysts and consultants have said, you sold it, uh, you know, f for much less than what it's worth. Uh, and we really need to. Well, so the proposal you're here nor there. I think some. Yeah. Some of, so, they, but they it, we, sold it because they have to. They have to cover off the the, the deficit. And that's exactly four hundred and seven billion dollars. Exactly, and that's the the issue with that is it's just complete wasteful spending on on behalf of the liberals. And then now they're trying to make up for these spending, uh, make up for these failed policies and failed spending uh, expenditures that they've been on for the last 13, 14 years, and will continue for the next two years until we change the government. So it's just not about when you say change the government. I mean. In all honesty, we thought that the last election was going to turn out uh, a lot better. I mean, we thought with the gas plants and all the stuff that was going on, there was a there was a feeling there that uh, um, Tim Hudak was going to come in. He was going to, you know, take names and fill the bus full. It didn't quite work that way. I mean, what would a conservative government hypothetically do uh, or propose to do in, in, in broad strokes that, that's going to catch people's minds? Because that's part of your assignment in Brampton South. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of that is, um, you know, Patrick Brown is this leader that, you know, we talked about the previous government, and, and but what Patrick, the energy Patrick brings mm -hmm. this time, um, you know, you can see him in North Bay in the morning and he'll be in Mississauga, Brampton. The, yeah. And by that, by nighttime, I mean, our leader is the hardest working leader, um, I believe, out of probably any provincial or federal government out there. Well, there's it's a picture one. of him. I had the pleasure of speaking to Patrick <laughs> Brown. No, we had an interview. He was here in the oh, studio. Yeah. An engaging uh, gentleman, an engaging personality, and someone who was passionately Ontarian. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a guy who started out in Barrie, municipal politics, yeah, exactly. and then yeah. and then used to sit across from uh, Trudeau in, yeah. in the federal government. So he's, uh, you know, he's blue as they get. Uh, let's drill down now. Uh, yeah. we, we talk about uh, Brampton South, which is the area that you're uh, going to represent. When we look at what the requirements are for Brampton, we need jobs, mm -hmm. we need infrastructure, we need to be able to keep people in Brampton instead of going somewhere else. What is uh, what is Prabhmeet uh, going to do to uh, make that a reality in Brampton South if given uh, uh, the opportunity to represent them? Well, 
one of the be biggest things here is Patrick's vision is solely focused on growing the economy and bringing jobs into Ontario. And, and I've had the chat, I've had the opportunity to chat with Patrick Brown, and and he's very uh, keen on bringing business into uh, Brampton and working. And I think that's where again we need effective representatives to pull the premier's ear when Patrick is premier and say, Patrick, let's get some businesses in Ontario. But on, on the general scheme of things, we got to look at why are the issues, what are the issues that will attract business. Not just into Brampton, but in Ontario as well. But with a Brampton focus, is let's reduce the red tape. There's we so like the Brampton focus. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so we've got so much red tape right now. We've got um, hundreds and thousands of these regulations that we probably don't need that slow down the process of bringing in um, bringing in business into the into the. Uh, communities such as Brampton or even anywhere else in Ontario. Uh, so we've really got to sit down. We've got to examine what's in there, mm -hmm. and we've got to reduce these so regulations. You're basically, with all due respect, you're a French fry. You're thrown into the oil right now. Yeah. You're in the process. <laughs> um, are you going to be conducting town hall meetings so you can start to canvass your uh, constituents oh, to get yes. some of their impressions? I think. And yeah. how does that how does that start to take form for you? Well, I think it's already has started to take form. I've in my nomination process, I believe it started to take form because I sat in hundreds of living rooms over my nomination process trying to sell memberships to the party, and it was an unbelievably and overwhelming this the response that I got and and the issues that were um, you know pertinent to a lot of people mm -hmm. and you know hydro is a job um, hydro co the, the cost of hydro needing more jobs in Ontario these were all issues that came up in every single meeting uh, with uh, with the constituents of Raptor. So with South. about a minute to go in in this segment we've got one more after this okay. is there something that you can put a uh, you know you always people say you put a thumbtack on that dart what's that one topic is there one thing that you just that's the hallmark uh, Pradmik Sarkaria is going to do this or I want to do this for my computer uh, my computer, my uh, community. <laughs> Is there one thing that kind of sticks out that you got to get done in your heart? I think bringing more jobs to uh, Brampton South is is going to be a big focus of mine uh, because we need to employ as many people as we can. Um, uh, we've got, and you know, jobs and hydro are going to be my two issues that I really want to improve for people because hydro affects every single person um, it, living in Ontario. So we've got to reduce the level, uh, the cost of living for a lot of people so they can do a, go out and enjoy and help the economy buy stuff and uh, go on from there. So that the, my goal is to get jobs to uh, Ontario, uh, Brampton, specifically and uh, reduce hydro rates. Prabhmeet Sarkaria is the uh, progressive conservative candidate who has been nominated to represent a Brampton South. When we come back, our final uh, segment, and we'll drill down a little bit and find out a little bit more about who this guy is, why someone would vote for him, and what made him run for politics. We've got to ask some of those poignant questions because you want to know the background, right? My name is Michael A. Sherbaugh, and you're watching Brampton Focus. We'll be back with lots more right after this. Back to Brampton Focus. Well, if you talk about somebody who's a lawyer, born and raised in Canada, and has basically his finger on the pulse of Brampton South, it is my next guest. Uh, in our first two segments, we talked about politics, we talked a little bit about the hydro, uh, and uh, Prabhmeet Sarkaria is the candidate who's been nominated as a Conservative representative for Brampton South. Um, I wanted to drill down a little bit now. You said in the first segment, and I'm going to hold you to this, you said that when you went door to door, uh, some of the comments that you heard was that the constituents are, are tired of absentee representation. And I mean, I, I, I'm, Amarjeet Magnet um, has uh, held this riding for now for two, um, two successive elections. That's uh, almost eight years. And the Liberals hold a, a huge a dominant force in Brampton, both the federally and provincially. When you hear the word absentee representation, what is going to make you not one of those? How are you not going to fold into that book? Well, my goal is to be the most accessible M MPP out there. Accessible. Accessible, yeah. I'm going to, my phone number hasn't changed. Uh, it's not going to change. My personal phone number is going to be on the back of any card I give out, any pamphlet I give out. But I think, uh, one of the main reasons th that I won't be is because I always want to be because we're only as strong as the, the the people that elect us, and we'll see that you know, this the riding of Brampton South is no longer going to be uh, 
um, held by Amrit Mangan. She's been moving off to Miss Sago Malton. So it will be an oh, open okay. riding. So that kind of goes to show, uh, you know, there, there ha there's been a disconnect and prob possibly that the candidate, uh, the current sitting MPP even knows there's a disconnect in that area. Uh, and that's why I don't want to make those same mistakes. I want to be out there. I want to. I want to have any time of the day. I want you to. If there's an issue for any of my constituents, I want them to reach out to me at any time so I can speak to them and I can listen to them and I can take their concerns to Queens Park. So when you talk about going to Queens Park, um, uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing Andrew Horvath uh, just several weeks ago, and we talked about tolls. And when you talk about road tolls. Um, uh, Current uh, Mayor of Toronto, John Tory, says it's two bucks each way. That means four bucks a day if you use a gardener each day. It's about $900 a year that it could conceivably hit you in tolls. Andrea was absolutely against that, and she is joining um, Patrick Brown in saying that they, as a unified force, uh, would stop roll tolls in Toronto. When you look at the extension of the 410, that's prime real estate for someone to say, you know, maybe as a city of Brampton, maybe we should have tolls. Where do you sit on tolls there? <laughs> <laughs> I am very adamantly against any sort of tolls. Um, there should be no tolls. Uh, it just increases the cost for the ordinary Ontarian who's just trying to get from point A to point B. Why are we making life so difficult for our Ontarians who just need to get to work? Adding $900 a year in cost is on, it's unbelievable. It's unprecedented. We can't do that. And by setting a precedent like this, we open up uh, areas like Brampton to tolls, but we need to make sure we're united and against this issue. Uh, and just as an example, it's like, it's just the government's failed policies that have brought us to uh, needing these sort of, uh, you know, the pr need, need for tolls and need for them to approve tolls. If we look at um, Hydro One, it was sold to uh, fund infrastructure, uh, but, you know, we're still using tolls to fund infrastructures. We've got a contractor who built a bridge upside down um, and was awarded another uh, <laughs> a couple hundred million well, the, dollar the, contract. So although, I, although that makes for great press, the, uh, the, the premise of it was the architect said, whichever way you had to put it, it was still architecturally sound. <laughs> now, you, you are correct as far as the way it was, but in all defense of both the contractor and, and the government, it still passed mustard. And yeah. although it was conceivably upside down, they were awarded another <laughs> contract. Yes. Yes. But that just speaks to some of the failed policies and yeah, the reasons where we've got to, we've got to, you know, get away from just taxing people that the solution can't be, okay, let's introduce another tax. The solution has got to be, let's find a way to reduce uh, wasteful spending uh, and, and, you know, and, and get our funding through that. So here's a picture of you, Prabhmeet. This is the beginning of your political career, as far as I understand. This was your acceptance <laughs> speech after it being was. nominated. A pretty special time. Um, you have a lot of responsibility now. Every single person that's sitting in that room supported you. All those people that you knocked on their doors, and now the Progressive uh, Conservative Party is hoping that you're going to come through. What, what does it feel like to have that pressure? Now everything changes. Mm -hmm. What you do on social media, where you go and eat, who you talk to, if you get a speeding ticket. Everything now in your life is under that beautiful political microscope. How, I mean, you're a lawyer, <laughs> yeah. but how, how does that make you feel? Because life has changed now, all because of that moment there. No, and you know, yes. first, first of all, yeah, yes. no, you're right. No, <laughs> no I agree. And, uh, you know, I'm, first of all, I'm very grateful to even have the opportunity. To, uh, it's a great honor to uh, represent uh, the residents of Brampton South and just Brampton in general. It's a proud moment for me. And I understand that I have a lot of responsibility and I have a lot of expectations to go out there and deliver because I... Uh, my nomination was based on that. I'm going to be a member of this community that speaks to any issue that a constituent brings to my office, mm -hmm. or even before I'm a nominated. I'm, I want to sit down with as many individuals, as many constituents, just not even in Brampton South, anywhere. If you have an issue with a party or you have an issue with uh, where this province is going, I want to sit there. I want to talk to you. I want to listen to your ideas. And we want to bring those ideas to Patrick Brown, and we want to bring those ideas to Queen's Park so we can all... Uh, you know, prosper as a, a, a as a government, uh, as a province together and moving forward. Uh, we need everybody. We can't just, you know, nitpick. We, uh, you know, we only want concern. We need to get everybody together and we need to move forward and and and, and continue this um, this change. That well, you've got to show an there. option. I mean, there is the, there is the era of Trumpism. And uh, I will say, I mean, uh, uh, what Trump represents is change. And uh, whether you like it or you don't, it's uh, it's change. And there is a reformulation. I mean, you look at the way the world is going. There is more conservatism now than liberalism. So, uh, 
I, I give you an opportunity, um, uh, pardon me, to uh, talk to our constituents. I mean, we are very fortunate in Brampton Focus to have a lot of people to watch from many um, party uh, lines. Give them a taste of uh, what they have to look forward to, uh, your commitment to them, and uh, how they can get in touch with you. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for everybody in Brampton South and just the residents of Brampton uh, for having the faith in me. Um, I promise to you to deliver at Queen's Park whatever interests or whatever concerns that you may have. So once again, if you have any uh, issues with me, you can contact me on my website, prabmeetsarkaria.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter, prabsarkaria. Or you can contact me on Facebook. My cell phone number is 416-558-0057. And I look forward to working with every, each and every single one of you. Prabhmeet Sakaria, he is the nominated candidate for Brampton South for the Progressive Conservatives underneath the leadership of Patrick Brown. My name is Michael A. Sharpal. Thank you very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you again. You can always reach us at brandonfocus.ca. Thanks for watching.